declared that it's God we need to thank for our food. It's God that sends the sunshine and the rain, and it's God that's organised the seasons too, so that in springtime we can plant the seeds in the ground, we can watch them grow, and then in the summer and the autumn we can harvest them. Isn't it amazing how God has thought of everything? Now Eric's inspired me today to get on and have a go at making some bread, okay? What do I need if I'm going to make some bread? Wow, there was a lot of answers there. I'm going to make mine in my bread machine today and I've got a special recipe that I know is going to work. Your recipe at home might be a bit different. Let's see what I need. First of all, I've got some water and a bit of oil. Okay, let's pop that in. Oh, here. Then I've got some milk. Do you know where milk comes from? I hope you didn't say the fridge or Tesco. Milk comes from cows, doesn't it? Cows need God too. They need God to provide the rain and the sunshine just like us. Do you know why? It's because they eat grass, isn't it? And they need the grass to grow so that then they can produce the milk and we can put it on our cereal or in our bread. So there we go, there's some milk. Next up, we've got a little bit of salt. And then we've got one of my favourites, we've got some sugar. Do you know how sugar is made? The farmers are busy in their fields at the moment growing sugar cane and sugar beet. When it's harvest time, they'll harvest it and they'll take it down the road to Bury St Edmunds. I don't know if you've ever driven on the A14 past Bury St Edmunds and you've seen the sugar factories along the side of the road. Well, it goes there and the clever people inside the factories turn it into sugar. So let's put some of that in too. Okay, so we've got water, we've got oil, we've got milk, we've got sugar and we've got salt. I think we might be missing something though. Of course, we haven't got the flour. Eric told us all about the flour, didn't he? How the farmer grew the wheat, it had to go to the mill to be ground and then delivered to the shops and the bakers so that we could make our bread. So there are lots and lots of flour in there. Oh, lovely. And there's one more thing. The most important ingredient of all. We need some yeast. I've got dried yeast here. It doesn't look very special, does it? It's just a brown powder. But did you know it's actually alive? When I add it to my bread mixture, we'll make it nice and warm inside and that will wake the yeast up and it will start to grow and feed on the sugar and it will give the bread a lovely rise and make it look delicious and make that epic toast that Eric really loved. So there we go, there's our yeast. Now we'll pop it in. We'll close the lid and we'll leave that for a few hours to make some delicious bread. Now while it's cooking, let's think about what Eric learned today. Listening to his story reminded me of a verse that we all learnt together a few weeks ago. I wonder if you can remember it. Can you say it with me? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. That's what we need to do this week, isn't it? We need to remember to thank God for everything that he's done for us. I'm going to ask you to pause this video in a moment because I want you to go and find a pen and a piece of paper. And on it, I'd like you to write three things that you can say thank you to God for. Come back when you're done. Can you hold your list up so I can see? Wow, there's some lists with loads more than three things on. There are so many different things we can thank God for, isn't there? We can thank him for our homes, our family, our friends, our food, for providing us with everything that we need. But most of all, we can thank God for sending his son Jesus to the earth to die on the cross so that the wrong things that we do can be completely forgiven and we can be part of God's family. 
let's thank God for that and for some of the other things in our list now. Father God, thank you that you send sunshine and rain and springtime and harvest every year so that we have the food that we need to eat. We thank you that there are so many different types of food with different flavours and textures so that eating never becomes boring. We thank you for pizza and chips, for broccoli and peas, for chocolate and ice cream and we thank you for the people who make our food for us. The farmers, factory workers, delivery drivers, shopkeepers, mums and dads. You provide for us in so many different ways everything we could possibly need. But most of all we thank you for Jesus. Thank you that through him we can become part of your family. Please help us this week to be like Eric, to remember to thank you and the people around us for the things they do for us. We thank you that you give us everything we need and have kept us all safe during lockdown and we ask that you be able to let us meet again at Divis soon. Amen. My bread's ready. We can make Eric's epic toast now. It's a pity no one's invented smell vision yet because it smells amazing. The yeast has done its job, it's made the bread rise and look delicious. Perhaps this week you can get busy in the kitchen baking something too. While you're doing it, think about the different ingredients and how God provides them for us. And also, I want you to keep hold of that piece of paper you were writing on earlier. Take it up to bed with you tonight when you go, and before you go to sleep, see if you can add at least one more thing that you can thank God for. If you do that every day this week, you'll have seven more things on your list by next Sunday. Whatever you do, I hope you have a great week. Hope you enjoy it, stay safe, try not to get sunburnt, and we'll see you soon. Bye.